Um, thanks a lot. Um, I think the, the, the first point is why aren't, why hasn't this been acknowledged before? Um, I think, I mean, we all know, um, I think that there's probably at least two reasons for that. Um, one is that the, there's a, a huge amount of um, programs and newspaper coverage of people who claim benefits. But it's not, it's not sympathetic, it's not understanding, it's to demonise and to hold people up as though they're somehow less than the rest of us. Those television programmes, those papers, they create the context in which people can be dismissed and treated abominably. And no one cares, because we know what they're like. And I think that that's a, a really dangerous element in our culture. If you're poor, or if you have, or you're, you're struggling with a job, well, we know that even if everyone fulfills every dot and comma that they're asked to fulfill. They get to every appointment on time. They, every form is filled out absolutely accurately. There will still be people sanctioned at the end of that week. Debbie Abrams, the Labour shadow, said she would remove the work capability assessments. They would remove them. So your own doctor, your own consultant, their word is right, their word is adequate. So the work capability assessments, they would go and they would change the sanctions regime. And my God, they ought to too. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, it's the third time I've seen the film and it's just more powerful each time I saw it, um, middle of, well, when it first came out. And, you you um, want to get a season ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, um, it becomes more powerful each time I, I see it. Um, and I just want to thank you really. Um, I remember when the Tories got in and they were talking about bringing in austerity and Ian Duncan Smith specifically said, we are going to introduce the element of pain and fear. He actually said, pain and fear will be introduced into the benefit system. I've been to an uh, ATOS assessment and um, one of the things they said to me when I described the pain that I had in my legs um, I was asked, well, is it a condition or is that a symptom? And you can you imagine being in that room knowing that what, you know, every single gesture you make is being recorded? Uh, I, I myself signed on 43 years ago and uh, I have to say it's a pretty similar experience except then the officials were slightly more flexible because I recall missing an appointment uh, because we had uh, organised uh, barricades to get rehoused from Elgin Avenue, Paddington, which is why I'm here, and got a council flat here. But I arrived a week late for signing on and explained what had been going on. I said I'd been busy, and the guy said, yes, we know you've been busy, Mr Corbyn, that's okay. Thank you very much for coming out to support the Ellsbury, um, all the people on the Ellsbury in support of this cause. Um, also, just to say that the film was very inspiring and it touched myself personally because I've had an, an issue when I was made redundant um, after 31 years of pain into the system and was passed from pillar to the post and then ended up walking away. So it, it really touched a raw nerve with me. Coming in Britain is enormous revolutionary struggle and that's what we're really talking about here because they are not going to stop. They are not going to, uh, legally we're not going to ar win the argument. We're going to win it by mobilising our forces, by occupying this estate, by taking their property, yes. by putting an end to the parliamentary road to socialism. There isn't a way forward in that way. We're not saying that, you know, we do need to have our allies there, that's true. But I think that, you know, 2017, uh, 1917 was the year of the Russian Revolution, and 2017 has to be the year of the British Socialist Revolution. And when we're actually talking about changing and selecting the right candidates, we're talking about selecting revolutionary candidates. Candidates that will organize, that will defeat these right-wing leaders inside the Labour Party, inside the trade unions, that are stopping every single fight, that are selling everything out, and actually supporting the right-wing in the Labour Party. It's basically the press and the trade union leaders lined up against we. Well, we're millions strong, and we can, we can show that. So I hope your next film will be about how we took power. How absurd it is when there is this grotesque wealth um, 
I mean, one figure that sticks in my mind is that there's, there's one CEO who earns in 45 minutes what the average in his industry earned, and his industry is well paid, the average is 35,000 pounds. He earns in 45 minutes. And we've tolerated this inequality. Um, and we have to change it. As to me, and I'll finish on this, that I think it is what makes it an historic moment is I think it's the first time in the Labour Party in its history where it's had a leader who will stand on the picket line with workers in struggle. And I think we must, if, if the Labour right were to, t were to remove him, I think we're way back. I can't see how far back we are. We're, we're seriously 50 years or more. But my God, they're up against something now. If we stick together, as someone says, we are a lot of people. So good luck. Good luck with the fight. Thanks for coming tonight.